What's up everybody, I'm Jesse Showalter and welcome back to a series on designing and coding a responsive landing page from start to finish. We are smack dab in the middle, this is part three, where today we're gonna to be talking about wireframing and mood boarding. A wireframe is the basic structure without any sort of visual aesthetics on top of it that lays out the structure of the content of the site itself. After that, we're gonna do a mood board where we take all the inspirations we pulled from that research and discovery phase and mix it in with other visual elements that we feel pairs with the brand, product, or company, I hope that you guys are ready. I'm really, really excited to get started. Let's do this thing. Okay, so we've opened up our project and we wanna start wireframing. And when I wireframe, I like to do like six to eight concepts, like really, really quickly. Now we're only doing one landing page, so that makes it really, really easy for us. And everything that we do, we wanna just like let our creativity flow and try to make solutions, create solutions to the problem of this website need, needing to be a thing. Um, we wanna remember our project requirements. And so to do that, um, I am just gonna like put these project requirements like right over here on the side so I can always like reference back to them, okay? So that's what we came up with in our project brief and in our discovery phase. Now we're gonna start drawing. Okay, so we've created our wireframes inside of our iPad and we have uploaded them to our computer and they're sitting right here on my desktop. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and open up a new sketch document because we're gonna create the wireframe and make it a high res version of, of the wireframe, okay? And so I'm gonna drag my wireframes that I created in and now you can see I have something to work with. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and just assess the work that I did in the wireframes and see, because not there's not one wireframe in here that's correct. There's most likely pieces of different ones that I can really take and slam together into a new high fidelity wireframe. And so I'm just gonna assess the work that I've done here. I'm gonna zoom in, get them nice and big. And over on my left hand side, I have my project requirements. I wanna make sure that I'm keeping those in view while I'm working. So. This first wireframe that I did has the most right things going for it. So we're gonna build off of this wireframe. And um, sometimes just like what's in your gut, like the first thing you do is the right thing. So um, we're gonna work off of that. So I'm gonna take all of those things and I'm just gonna group them together. That is like my wireframe notes, right? Next thing I wanna do is I wanna draw an artboard. So I'm gonna press A for artboard and I'm gonna go up to responsive web and I'm just gonna hit desktop HD. Let me get that out of there. Okay, and uh, we'll put this right over here next to it. All right, so we have our desktop HD, and then the first thing I'm gonna do is set up my grid. So I'm gonna press Control L, and it's gonna bring up the grid settings. You can also go right up here to the layout button, um, and you can just click that on or off as well. Um, there's also a drop down depending on how you've customized your sketch settings. I'm not gonna go into all that, but you can do that. Or you can show the rulers, so that's nice. And I don't necessarily want to do grid, but I do want to go to my layout settings, okay? So we can see 960, it's kind of an older size grid. I think I want to bump that up to like maybe 1140. Um, and we're just going to center it. And I'll keep it a 12 column grid. Yeah, all that's fine, okay? And I'm going to start laying out some of these pieces of the wireframe. We'll fast forward it and we'll come back and we'll see a high res wireframe sitting right there. Oh, 
Okay, and we are back. That's it, we've created a high fidelity wireframe of the project. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the mood board portion, which we're gonna do really quick down and dirty. But to do my mood board today, I'm gonna be using Envision. So if you don't have an account, you can sign up for a free account, not a sponsored video. Just a really good way to create kind of collaborative boards that you can throw stuff on the web, share a link, and let your clients see it. What I really like about uploading things into an Envision board is that I can change the size of an item. For me, I use that as a way to denote, you know, hierarchy or level of importance. If something's really big, it means I really like that a lot. And if something is really small, then it means, yeah, this is okay. So I'm gonna do this now and fast forward and just grab a bunch of screens. And a lot of times I think it's really important to not only grab entire screens, you wanna do some of those, but more importantly, you wanna grab shots of things that you want to use the, the screen capture portion to grab pieces that really stand out to you. Not in the entire web page, but sometimes there's things on a site that are better than others that you want to kind of use. So we've taken lots of pictures. Now we're just going to come up and grab everything that I took. It's gonna create an awesome mood board that your clients can look at, sample the things that are inspiring you for the website, and see that you as a designer have a good handle on their brand and, you know, just in general, they like the direction you're going. You can also, if you want, click into each individual one and leave a comment like, I uh, love uh, the color and angles. You know, and leave a comment for your client when they come back. You can also take things like I like to do and you know, make them different sizes and move them around. So I really like that. So now we have a really attractive and exciting interactive mood board that clients can chime in on. And I think this is a good way to do it. Well, that's it. That's how simple the wireframing and mood boarding process can be. Don't overthink it. Don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. Take all of that research you pulled in from the discovery phase, all those project requirements, and start laying out a structure that emphasizes all of the primary functions and primary kind of call to actions that you've established in that Word document. We also created a mood board that was just a simple collection of visual elements, but now we have a really good understanding of what the project should look like, what it should feel like, and how it should be organized and structured, we're ready to move on to design. I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah! If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. There's lots of videos coming in this series, as well as lots of other videos about design and creativity and development. So maybe stick around and hang out with me. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one.